this motherfucker right here, she's my language, you gotta protect him. He's only, he's only 16 years old, but he's an absolute stud, and he's even, outside of football, he's even a fucking greater guy. So, you know, good luck. Thank you. I got that on video. You got that, too? Need that right there. Eight million followers? Pronounce your name for me, Enyo. We've been doing this for years, bro. Enyo Yapur. Enyo Yapur. That's, yes, that's Dominican? Yep. Who's Dominican? Your mom, your dad? My father. Your father's yeah. Dominican? Yep. He's, you speak Spanish? No. He speaks Spanish? Yes. And yo, we in Miami, right? Mm hmm Everybody at the Walgreens and the Walmart speaks Spanish, right? Mm hmm Why do you not speak Spanish, bro, if it's in your house? I mean, my... <laughs> it's something... You know, when we had, like, a focus on football, it's just like, that's something that he really never had time to teach because it's always been football, 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 everything. So it's like... Spanish is never really something that crossed his mind. Like, you know what? Let me sit down and teach him. So they don't they don't talk it in the house. So uh, no, it's, it's my, not really spoken in the house. It's definitely spoken in the house. And like, even when my father speaks it, because I got an auntie, um, she's in, she lives in Dominican Republic. She's a mother, and you know they always come around. They always speak. She always talk. So it's like I can understand it to an extent. Mm -hmm. It's just that I I can't speak it. I never. But you can understand it. Yes. We try really hard to teach my daughter Spanish to the point where we had one of them teach her talk to her in Spanish when she was in like preschool every day. Then my daughter, we tried again. We sent her to a Spanish school where every, all the teachers spoke Spanish. They, they couldn't even speak to me in English. <laughs> the whole school was Spanish mm -hmm. and my kids understood Spanish, could say it back to the teachers, would never come home and would never show us that they could speak Spanish. They would just come home and act like my name. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, but they understood it and they said it. But if you don't keep doing it, you kind of like you kind of like lose it. Yeah, you lose the the fluid. Yeah. So th this kind of explains the video a long time ago. You chasing the chicken in in the yard, and so you was working out. You was training or just, just yeah. Home? I mean, it was like it, it was it was funny too, cause like it was one day like the chicken just popped up there. Oh, okay. Was, like, like literally, like the, it's not like we had, had chicken. chickens in the yard. Yeah, like literally, <laughs> literally, we woke up one day. It was a weekend, and the chicken just popped up there. And you know, my father, he got an idea because we were just going, we were just going to kick it out of the yard. He's like, "Wait, put some shoes on." Yeah. And he said, "Go now, now go catch it." Yeah. And literally, like, I ain't gonna lie, that was the fastest chicken in the world, dog. I guess. You caught it. Yeah, eventually, but I only caught it because it got caught on something. It got caught like in the bushes at yeah. the very end, and I caught it. And dog, it's it's way harder than than people than it looks, and the way people make it sound. No, I'm sure it is hard. Any wild animal, I'm sure it's hard. Catch, catch any animal. So listen, la last year, bro, your season ends with a loss to Miami Central, who end up being state champs. Uh, mm -hmm. Arguably, what number three, number two in in the nation, number four, whatever they got me. Um, close game, the second game. Um, going into that game, bro, after the first game, we ain't gonna talk about the first game. Mm. That's some, some bullshit. <laughs> but going into the second game, mm. did you feel better about that game? Uh, I definitely did because when I went to, went into the second game, it was like at that point I had I had my pride to follow because that the way we went down that first game, it was like it was blatant, basically it was blatantly disrespectful to the type of person I am, the type of caliber athlete that I know I am, and the type of team that we have. Mm -hmm. We just went down like. Like basically, like we was nothing. Like we was exactly what people said we were. Right. So when I went into that second game, it basically I had a chip on my shoulder. It was something that helped me, you know, get through the game and fight harder. Cause you know, when I'm playing for my pride and I'm just playing, you know, to be better and just trying to prove people wrong, I play different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and y'all, what was the score of that game? Uh, Real good game though. Close I think game. it was. I think it was like 14 28, something yeah. like that. Um, close, close game. Um, Y'all go down, and, and first thing Coach say, he walking out, he said to me, man, we're we going to be back next year. Oh, definitely. Y'all add a few coaches. One's mm -hmm. my guy, Coach Mo. Y'all mm -hmm. add a few coaches. Mm -hmm. But y'all add a bunch of talent. You got a defense. All 11, I think, is D1. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, Y'all add, add a few pieces. Well, a lot of pieces. Y'all got eight sets of twins. Mm. Got, <laughs> um, tell me about some of the guys that y'all added on offense. <clears throat> some of the guys we added on offense, one of the, you know, a great receiver. I know me and him have great chemistry. If you've seen us at the Rivals camp, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, my boy Jade Card, man. Mm -hmm. me, me and this dude, man, we honestly, it was like the first day I met him, I talked to him. Like, it was just, we, we linked. And it was just something there, like, like we were just cool. Like he came over to my house, we talked, 
and then you know as it develops, it's like you can see it on the field now. Not now, like me and him on the field is like we think alike. So it's like mm -hmm. I know what type of pass he wants in certain situations. Yeah. Does he want to high? Does he want to low? Like what is he thinking? How is he about to cut off his route? How is he about right. to run his route? Anybody oh, yeah. else y'all added? Uh man, the amount of receivers we added, we added a lot of underrated guys. But another guy that you guys might know, he's from Kelly City, my boy Mari. Okay. You know, Mari, Mari is basically, you know, another like another thing for speed. So we added, we already knew we had speed, but Mari is a amazing guy. He's a very he's utility basically. Like we could really put that guy everywhere. So one play he'll be at the slot. Next play he'll be at running back. Uh -huh. Next play he'll be he'll down there be on the outside. He everywhere. So really, he's just everywhere. And honestly, it's like when we when you give me that many weapons, and like honestly now what our coaches have done and what we have done is basically we've surrounded me with so many threats on the field. So now we have we got a big guy, mm -hmm. six three, gonna catch the ball. Then now we we always got our speed, Mighty Mouse Ivory. Right. Now we got Zay, another guy who's gonna make tough catches in fast. Right. Then you got Maury. All right. Then another guy named Terrence Honeywood coming out of Somerset. Man. Terrence Honeywood? Yep. One of the cr most crisp routes to the T. Then we got Joaquin Reed. Oh, boy. Uh, Y'all got a whole new team. Huh? Y'all got a whole new team. <laughs> yeah. We got Joaquin. But Joaquin was there. That's another underrated guy who run crisp routes. Yeah. So basically now what you've done is basically you surrounded, you surrounded a guy who could throw the ball, mm -hmm. who could run the ball. You surrounded him with probably some of the best Air threats yeah. down in South Florida. How many nationally ranked teams y'all got on y'all y'all schedule this year? Um, I think three. Three? What three? Uh, Saint C John Bosco. I got Saint John Bosco. Central. Central. And I think we play American Heritage sometime sometime down the line. All right, I right, man. I hear the trash talking between y'all and mm -hmm. Central, and um, y'all saying y'all ready this year, and then and I hear. Does any of the trash talking between the Rockets and and, and the Vikings? Does it ever get back to you? You ever heard oh. anything them talk about you? Oh, definitely, man. It, uh -huh. it definitely does get back to me, and it, and it's like, and it's like uh, I can understand it because it's like, damn, like when the way they talk about me and the way that sometimes they the they'll describe me or come at me, and it's like, okay, I see how y'all feeling. And like, they, I think they got a, a saying. It's it's a, it's something like FTK or FTK. Uh, like yeah, or, or pop behind kids, something like that. Something <laughs> disrespectful. And it's just like, hmm, like y'all really think y'all like that? Like like they on their hard horse. Yeah. And it's just like you feel. And like I told you, I'm a pro, I'm a very prideful person. I have my pride, and I don't I don't ever like being disrespected in no type of manner. So it's just like when I played them this time, it's like okay. Next time I play, I, I want y'all to say that. I, I just want y'all to say that when I'm when I'm doing it to y'all. Do the game. Yeah. Yeah. I want y'all to say that there. There it is. This person. So you looking forward to that game? Mm. I mean, that's. Am I? Am you? Yeah, am I, boy? They they finna they finna get a new and approved. They gonna get something they ain't never experienced before. St. John's Bosco. I think they ended up number two in the nation. However, they flip flopped that last year. Number two, number one. Um, Y'all go to y'all gonna go out there to play them, right? Yeah. Uh, flying out there. Y'all gonna fly out there to play them. Um That's that's a big that's a that's a big feat. Y'all get a win out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Y'all come back now, y'all ranked in the nation. Period. Definitely. Point blank. I mean, uh, period point blank, blank y'all get a win out there, y'all ranked in the nation. How how do you feel about going to play? Well, because it, it's a weird thing, because I asked this, but you guys played Central twice last year. Yeah. And Central <laughs> was ranked, Man, arguably, you know also. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, 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 right. But that's something y'all guys are used to doing. I mean, New Orleans mm -hmm. has been in the in the district with Central and Northwestern and all of that crap, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but how, how do you feel about going out there, you know what I'm saying, flying out there to play a, a team that, that's been ranked top five for the last who could who could remember? You know what I'm saying? Honestly, what I see that game as, I see it as an opportunity. Okay. Really, that's the main thing I see that. Um, one, I don't fear them. I'm not afraid of no team. I'm not afraid of nobody. But that's the main thing. But I really see it as an opportunity because this opportunity, one, is going to not only put me on the map, but it's going to put my team on the map. It's going to uh -huh. put everybody on the map. It's going to prove, and it's going to allow us to prove ourselves. Right, right. Not only to them, but to us mainly, because we know that we're an amazing team. Like when we look, we just look at ourselves. We see ourselves in the weight room. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves on the field. We see our practices. We see how intense it gets. And honestly, when you have all these characteristics, when you realize and you look at it, it'd be like, dog, we know we good. Yeah. 
Now we just got to prove that to ourselves. And now we got, and when we prove it to ourselves, we're going to prove it to everybody else automatically. It just I mean, a lot it. of it is confidence. I mean, a lot of it is confidence as a team, like believing yeah. that y'all can, 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 make, can, make, can make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, what game y'all play basketball, you know? What game? That's the, honestly, I don't know, but I think we're, tr we're trying to make it to the second game of the year yeah. after week one. Y'all trying, trying to get them early? Yep. Okay, so what's going on with you? You got the Elite 11 coming up, right? Mm -hmm. How how does it work? You're a 2025 kid, Elite 11. Is it is it by is it by years? Do y'all? Um, last time I went over there, I, that's how they did it. They had one. First of all, when you walk in, it's just like you walk in. It's a big stadium. They'll give you a jersey, maybe a I think a microphone so they can hear you, mm -hmm. and then they'll give you your measurables and all that. Then you'll do your little car my drill. They got a 40. I don't think they have a vertical jump yeah. or none of that, but they do have a 40 time. And then after that, it's mainly just we're throwing. Yeah. We just get to throwing. We throw certain routes. We make certain type of throws. Sometimes they want a touch pass. Sometimes they want a low pass. Yeah. They got they got stationary throws where you gotta make, um, where you gotta stand still and then throw it to the left. Sometimes you're backing up and you're trying to throw it across the field. Mm -hmm. And that's what it basically is. Then towards the end, they have an accuracy challenge. Yeah. So basically, you gotta hit on a per, per on a specific spot on a person's body. Yeah. And it's just like. Five points for the face, yeah. three, point, three points for the body, and one point for anything else. So you like, remember this? You remember everything that happened, huh? Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dog, like if you we, we, if you win a elite eleven camp, that really that really puts you on the map. Yeah. yeah. How did you do the first time? Uh, the first time I did really good. I, I came second. You came in second? Yeah, I came in second. You've been training a long time. Who you been training with? Um, when I was a kid, I always trained, trained with Coach Rucker. Okay. Coach Rucker, that was my coach since literally. He really focused. He really helped improve my mental part of the game. And I feel like right now that is the best part of my game today because I feel yeah. like there's certain – when you look at quarterbacks in general, there's certain quarterbacks, you know, who mechanically are sound. Yeah. Like the most mechanical sound guys. Like mm -hmm. the way the ball just comes out the hand is perfect. Yeah. But then when you, put, when you transition that to the game, it's like – they can't really transition to the game because they, they're throwing against the defense now. They got people in their face. Right. But something that, you know, it's kind of the opposite of me. Am I mechanically sound? Yes. Am I the most mechanically sound person? No, not at all. And I know that and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But what I do have is I have the mental part. Like, I know what I'm looking at. I know, I know how to score. I know how to lead my team down the field. When you say the mental part, come on, let's talk. What, what you mean the mental part? What, what you mean so by it? Is it mental toughness or is it mental like you can see the everything, defense? Everything. So first is mental toughness. Like you have to understand that they're going to talk. Like They're going to talk, 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 man. The stuff that I hear on the football field is insane. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff that they say sometimes, like I just, I just have to look and just, I'll be like, dog, okay, you're yeah. just talking. But not only is it mental toughness, it's also when you're reading the defense, because it's like it's, it, everything's, everything's not going to be perfect. You'll right. never have a game where it's perfect. It's always going to be a situation where something happens. How are you able to adapt to a situation? Right, maybe, right. One time you'll, maybe one time you'll, somebody misses a block. Mm -hmm. Maybe your receiver runs a bad route. What I can do is I'm able to adapt. I'm able to control the situation and squeeze the best out of that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as, as a quarterback, man, like you can never get down, mm -hmm. right? Like you always got to play it off. Your damn hand could be broke. Yep. And you always got to act show like it. Uh, you always got to. Uh -huh. I played. I played two seasons with. Uh, I had a torn meniscus. I played two seasons. Two seasons. I played two full seasons. You knew I played, it was torn or no? Uh, we knew it was torn, but it was like, I mean, I was straight. <laughs> they people yeah. didn't know. Literally, no one knew it was. No one knew it was torn. No one knew it was messed up. Because for, cause even though that it was torn, mm -hmm. is I never changed the way I played. I still was breaking tackles. I still was running through people. But little do they know, when I got home that night, I didn't get up the next morning. No? <laughs> nah, like I, pain, I was- Pain, a lot of pain? What? It was, never, it was never a game where I didn't feel some type of pain. It was really? Like, yeah, but pain, but pain is temporary. This was, this, was, this was Champagnat? Champagnat? Champagnat is when I first got myself hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is a champagne yacht? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank man. you. Yeah, Appreciate it, man. Cheesecake. Thank you, thank you. That's what's up. <laughs> that's, that's what's up. I'm going to eat this, too. Right? We ain't going to sit here and act like a problem. I'm going to eat this. <laughs> um, that was a champagne yacht? Mm -hmm. You've been on varsity since eighth grade, right? Yes, sir. Um, man, it seems like you've been in high school for eight years, bro. Yeah. That's I mean. what it feels like. You still got two more years left. Mm-hmm. Um, you go to Miami, New Orleans, man. That's my humble model. I went to Miami, New Orleans. Um, mm -hmm. 
And my my freshman year, guess who my high school quarterback was? Who? <laughs> Coach Heidelberg. For real? Yeah. He was. He was. Heidelberg was good. Heidelberg was all day. Uh, for real. He, 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 I'm be, sure you be, can learn something from Heidelberg. Be Listen he, to him. He was. He was that good when he was. He was. He was good, but they had such a talented team. Like he made plays. He was a good quarterback. He was a. Uh, um. No, he was good. He was all day. You know what I'm saying? They had, but if you, they had such a talented team. Like they, mm-hmm. they had like the football was different then. Mm-hmm. It was only four classes. He had a couple D1 players on his team. You know what I'm saying? They didn't really. I don't think he ever won anything. Mm-hmm. But he could play. He was known across the city. No, he could play. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of somebody who. I'm trying to think of somebody who reminds me of. Uh, Coach Hardenberg. Yeah. I mean, like even in practice today, like you'll be surprised, but Coach, Coach Burke could still sling it very much so. Like he like it's it's even certain times where it's like Coach Burke will come into practice and like like he he likes to first of all he he understands me as a person, so he understands mm-hmm. like when when it comes to competition, competing, that's when I'm at my best. So like yeah. he'll come to practice and he'll just prick at me, and he'll always just be like, I bet you I could throw better than you. <laughs> like he'll, no. he'll and he'll grab the football and it's like and even still now like he could still throw the ball. He. And, he got some flack because one spring game, he was the quarterback of one of the teams, and he played against the first team or something like that. And I was there that day. Mm-hmm. He was able to move the ball, um, and the other offense with the starting quarterback kind of couldn't move the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people gave some flack about that. It kind of got out there like, oh, why would he be out there? You know how people always look at stuff. But mm-hmm. to me, I kind of looked at it like, I'm the OC. This is my offense. Okay, I'm going out here because the backup quarterback hurt. We need a quarterback on the other side. Mm-hmm. And I execute the offense yep. that I'm trying to teach. <laughs> this. Mm-hmm. So you the starter, right? Mm-hmm. Can't say anything back to me because you saw me do it in live. He didn't have any equipment, but it was yeah. live. You know what yep. I'm saying? And that's how I kind of looked at it. I kind of looked at it like, well, well, yeah, You once you get out there and execute the offense, there's nothing the starting quarterback can say. Learn the shit or either, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, somebody else do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's But but I thought it was cool, but a lot um, some people gave him flack about that. I know Heidelberg, Heidelberg was a, 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 a good quarterback, man. He yeah. was all day. He, he was yeah. he, he was big time. And honestly, Coach, what Coach Heidelberg does and what he does for the kids and what he does for the team, man, mm-hmm. uh, all I have is respect for Coach Berry, especially for what he's done for me mm-hmm. as a quarterback. Like he's really helped me improve my game that much. He like he helped me understand like everything doesn't have to be hard. Like that's what he is. Like he is the type <laughs> of person. Like he he like you don't understand how many times like he's preached to me like take what's easy, take yeah. what you have, mm-hmm. and he helps me understand that. Like listen, listen, dog. Like we we have four plays to get ten yards. Like make take advantage of take advantage of all of that. Right. So he helped me understand that and eventually develop that into my game. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a patient thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a patient, I, and and it's hard. I learned it as an adult, but I see it throughout in youth throughout the game. Like you, sometimes you press, like you, you want to make the play mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, I mean, the quarterback job is to make sure the offense survives mm-hmm. to get to the next play. Yep. <laughs> sometimes that's the quarterback job. Um, um, but no, that's a that's a that's a patient thing. That's a that's a that's a that's a patient. You ever play the game of chess? Yeah. The, the game of chess kind of teaches you teaches you that stuff. How to be strategic about things. How sometimes not going fast mm-hmm. and just lowering somebody into a place where you can eventually trick them in the third quarter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I've seen teams. I, I, I've seen teams run the ball, run the ball. Heidelberg. Mm. Has done this shit and, and upset. I think Northwestern one night, just by running the ball. Mm. No matter what the down the distance was, run the ball, mm. ran the ball, ran the ball, punt, run the ball, get a first down, run the ball, punt, get a first down, run the ball, punt, long shot, boom. Mm-hmm. Defense playing well now is fourteen seven. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've, I've seen them do it numerous times. Call a game like that. Um, that's just patience, mm-hmm. and it takes it takes a lot of patience to be able to call to call a to call a game like that. Yep. Um, so what's next, man? Spring football coming, right? Yep. We uh we are not having a spring game. Okay. Because, you know, of course, you know, we have so many transfers. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> <laughs> we have so many transfers, like, you know, um 
So what we are doing though, we are having a maroon versus gray game this May, May mm -hmm. coming up, and basically, um, it's a game, it's an inner squad game, and it's like we're gonna do it at our own field at our school, and it's just like it's us against us, and it's it's gonna be a real game. We're gonna have referees, mm -hmm. the coaches are gonna separate. You know, maybe one side gets the OC, one side gets DC, but it's also meant to be fun. Mm -hmm. But it's also meant to to test, like okay, like now it's a game, like I'm I'm gonna get hit. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they have, let me hit you. Yeah, see that's what that's that's what they do when you big and black. They always want to go live on the quarterback and shit. Dog. I mean, I enjoy it, and especially yeah. especially for the top. It only guy. happens, you know. <laughs> it only happens to the big dude. You know what I'm saying? Yep. How much you weigh? Uh, right now I'm at two twenty seven. Yeah. 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 They always want to go live on the big the big black quarterback. They don't never go live on fucking Carson Beck and them motherfuckers. Like. Yep. <laughs> No, nah, but you 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 got it. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. They are gonna go live. So it'll just be first team and second. How are they gonna do it? First team, second team. Um, they're no, they're gonna they're they gonna basically it's gonna be coaches who pick team. Mm -hmm. The coaches gonna pick the team. Well, obviously the coaches gotta pick the team because if players pick the team, it'll be terrible. Mm -hmm. But coaches gonna pick a team. They're gonna try to make it as fair as possible. You know, one side. Well, I think this is another time where Coach Hardenberg might come in and play quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. So because we don't, of course, as you know. Sadly, no, nobody else wants to come to, <laughs> come to New Orleans for some reason. <laughs> no, they know. don't. I don't, I don't you got why. no backup? No, I, I still don't. No? I had, it was it was five of us when I first got there. Yeah? And in a matter of a month, I was the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> what? Exactly. They got to go sit behind somebody. Well, I guess you got two years left, and if you the star, it's like, man, F this, huh? So you're back up like a wide receiver or somebody, huh? A cornerback or something. We were going wildcat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, no, that's funny. That's funny, dog. Um, listen, man, give me three things you can't live without. Three things I can't live without. Yeah. Foot, God, football, family. God, football, and family. You answered that fast. In that order? Yep. You answered that fast. God, football, and, and, and family. Yep. Um, you were a damn good linebacker <laughs> in, in, in you football, bro. <laughs> like, you was you used to be turned up out there. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. That definitely defense was definitely a calling for me when I was young. Yeah, yeah. I, it was just naturally because just for naturally where I am, I'm just I'm tough. For now. If if we got something we play called this or that, like a, a game we play called this or that, and I'm gonna ask you something, just give me an answer. If you if you had a chance to play just quarterback in high school mm -hmm. for the next two years or play both ways, what would you choose? Definitely both ways. You would the, play both ways? Just for the fun of it. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> no, you would go out there and, and hit people? Yep. No, nah, you used to be turned up on the defense, bro. I definitely used to be turned up. I mean, like, because on the defensive side of the ball, it was like, like, I, I was me. So you would play both ways? Definitely. For just, just for the fun of it. I mean, uh, ultimately, like, I'm a quarterback to the heart. That's my that's the position I love. I've yeah. never trade for it. But like, if I had the option to, I mean, yeah. Like, that, even as a child, that was my dream. But like, my father let me know from the start. He was like, "Nah, son, that's the one thing you can't do. Yeah. You never allow a quarterback to do that." Speaking of your father, man, somehow your father always finds a way to be on the sideline. Whether he's coaching, holding a yardstick, holding a water bottle, somewhere he's gonna be right there with you, bro. Yep. Is that a pack, like that a pack y'all have or something? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Does that, father, does that help you? Definitely does. My father. One thing it is, my father is the reason that I'm even here. He is the reason I'm the person that I am today. He is the reason that I'm the football player I am today. He is the reason for everything. Yeah. And I, hmm. you don't understand. I'm strong, love. bro. Yeah, you don't understand the love that I have for that man. Like, and the thing is, like, my bad. The thing is, some kids don't even understand what fathers try to do nowadays because I see it, and it's like I stopped because even as a as when I was younger. My father was very strict, and even to this day, he's still just as strict. Yeah. But it's like now I have an understanding of the goal, and yeah. I have an understanding of what he's trying to push me toward, and the type of man he's trying to make me, and the type of world he's trying to prepare me to live in. Oh, so like honestly, you see what all these all these people say about me on the social media when like yeah I have supporters, but the haters are just as bad. Yeah, like man. Man, my daddy told me worse. Your <laughs> <laughs> daddy done said worse to me. My daddy done said worse to me. Yeah. Like, like compared compared with my daddy, man. I don't care. Y'all could y'all could say what y'all want to say, man. My dad, my dad wins ten out of ten. Yeah. Because he's yeah he's very tough. He's a very tough man. He he raised his child to be tough, and he also taught me to be a man. When did you understand it? 
At mm. what point did the light come on? At the you? end of my ninth grade year. What happened? Because it was just basically, because it was like, because around that time, it was basically when we started, like, where, like, it was me and him would clash a lot. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it was one day we clashed, and it was just like I was outside, I was mad, and I just took a second and I paused. And I said, why is he acting like this? <laughs> and I, I really thought about it. And I said, why is he, why is he, I said, why is he acting like this? Like, why is he so hard about the little things? Like, why is he so tough on me about it? Mm -hmm. And then when I finally took the understanding, um, and I really just thought, I said, well, I said, damn. Yeah. Cause like you feel me like I'm not a person who's at, like I'm scared to be wrong. Like do I like to be right? Yes, but if I'm wrong, right to the nitty gritty, I'm wrong and I, I'll change. But you know, I really just paused and I thought about it. And that, I, said, for, for, I mean, from y'all's standpoint, you just all you have to do is this. Parents and kids don't ever, really ever meet at the same place. And and but if you just put it in his perspective, mm -hmm. he's been doing this 20 years longer than I've been doing it, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So let me at least take whatever he's saying into consideration. Yep. And and if you just start from there, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it because experience is a mug. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we, we was your age, bro. I mean, we was your age. We done all the crazy stuff you're doing. We just got older and, and realized that it was dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. then stopped doing it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, no, that's what's up, man, that you actually that you actually understand that at 16. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. No, no, that's, that's, that's what's up. Anything else going on, man? You don't develop any hobbies, man? You do anything outside of? I mean, mainly for me, what it is is, like, I'm full-fledged into football. And, you know, I'm not the prototype quarterback, you know. Um, six foot, most quarterbacks six three. Yeah, I'm not. I'm I'm very athletic. I'm I'm very athletic. I can run. Mm -hmm. I can do that. But you know, I'm not the normal pro style quarterback that people like. I don't even believe I'm a pro style quarterback. I think yeah. I'm a dual threat. Cause uh -huh. when you rush over a thousand yards, I, I don't know how you could still be considered a pro <laughs> style quarterback. But hey, they still got me as that. So yeah. But you know, so I basically. I always focus before on like, what do I need to improve? Like, what are my weaknesses? And yeah. yes, you should improve your weaknesses. Right. But what I mainly started focusing on, I'm like, what are my strengths? Right. And my strength was my strength. I'm I'm a strong person. I'm big, I'm strong. Right. So what I focused on was, I started to improve on that. Now, I'm probably, I'm, I'm lifting with the D lineman. You guys close mo. I'm And when I'm in the weight room, like D linemen are competing to keep up with me now. How much you been? Uh, 315. Really? Yep, and I squat and I squat six plates. No, because at the end of the day, it's about winning football games, and I think even the NFL is realizing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think even the NFL is realizing it's about getting first downs and winning football games. Um, and and so you're, I mean, you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, all, all of a sudden, Richardson, who the running quarterback, though, yeah. yeah. that's and that's yeah. like that's like a great inspiration. I mean, like just to see him is like. When you look at him, that that dude is a freak of nature. Yeah. yeah, he's tall, but the thing is, like, first of all, when you look at Anthony Richardson, people always consider him uh, as a quote unquote double edged sword. Yeah. And I guess you could look at it in that situation because, yeah. yes, he's like one of the most athletic, probably one of the strongest arms, most accurate, runs like a 4 4 something, maze of vertical. But then when you really look at his stats on the field, he has like one of the worst QBR ratings. And his, you know, like his completion percentage isn't the greatest. But when you really watch him play, yeah. like, he, he wins. Like he, <laughs> yeah, he, he wins. Like, like those stats don't matter. Like he's winning. Like, like when you look at him, he's just a playmaker in general. You know, he's from Miami. Yeah, favorite Scott Park. He then he moved. I guess his family moved him to Gainesville, and that's where he went to high school at. Mm -hmm. um, no, the game is definitely the game is definitely changing. Um, you been in any colleges, man? Like, yes. How many offers you got? Thirteen. Thirteen offers. Yep. Who's your biggest school you have? Colorado. Colorado offers you win. Huh? They offered you when? Uh, the day, like, uh, this was the day I was getting out of my surgery uh -huh. for my meniscus. Um, this is the day I got out of my surgery. I literally just off the anesthesia. Who like, offered you? Uh, the, the OC? Uh, yeah, the OC. It was the you going to take a visit out there? Huh? Yes, eventually. Yeah. They, we're planning on it. Where I'm, in I'm not in communication with them because, yeah. you know, I can't be in communication right. with them yet. But, you know, eventually they already let me know, especially when they, especially like when, you know, they offered me, it was like they definitely wanted me to be there. But you feel me? I got to, I have to wait. 
you know, because I'm still very young. Got you. You so, are very young. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but everybody uh -huh. let me know on September 1st, that's mm -hmm. when, that's when it's, it's going to get, down. that's when it's going to get popping. Yeah. So, yeah, because that's when they can finally, that's when they can finally start recruiting me the way they want to. You grew up a fan of any college football team? No, I grew up a fan of players, not teams. Players? Yeah. Got you. Not necessarily. You didn't necessarily so, like, have a team. During, during college football, like when I was younger, a great quarterback that I, I looked up to was Jameis Winston. When of he course. Was, not in the NFL. Right. <laughs> not He's fine. <laughs> of course. James Wilson was that guy, man. Yeah. Of but course. in college, I loved him. Um, a, a quarterback that I look up to right now in the NFL is Josh Allen. I love Josh Allen. I you love, like Josh Allen game? Yeah, I love his game. I love the way he plays. Because, you know, when you look at Josh Allen, he, he makes slower reads, but hit, like his arm, his arm makes up for that. So he tucks it and run too. Yep, and, he, and he's a bull. Yeah. Huge. Well, all right, man. Listen, bro. We we got you this year, man. I'm a model. You guys loaded up, man. We made to make a run. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying this year, and we are gonna follow you. All right. All right. Y'all make sure y'all like, share, comment, man. Shout out to the villains, Footballville, man. We out here.